Hello and welcome to Aviation 101 with Laura. It is almost Christmas and I thought it would be really fun to do an approach brief overview for a little known approach called the Jeppesen North Pole Approach. So this approach is not usable for navigation unless you're Santa, but it still is an approach chart and it looks like this. I thought it was hilarious when I first saw it. Jeppesen made this chart legitimately um, and they released it on their website. I will put a link in the video description so you can look it up yourself. And it's full of funny little quirks and Easter eggs, but we can still kind of do an approach briefing in theory, how an approach brief could go using this as our example. So when I am doing an approach briefing, the first thing I do is I look at the top of the chart. Jefferson calls it the briefing strip. And so the briefing strip is this section here at the top and it is all of our frequencies. So that prompts me to set up my radios for how I want them configured during the approach. And it also in that briefing strip tells me the required equipment. Now, apparently this is an RNAV or GPS approach. So that would mean I need a suitable RNAV or GPS system. And so I'm gonna make sure that I load that approach in my GPS or my RNAV system. And then I am gonna also notice that it does go to runway 18 and verify that it is going to the right airport that I want to go to. So here I'm going to Santa's Workshop International. It's always important to check what airport you're going to. And this just prompts me to set up all my equipment. Now, I, I do not know what the reindeer landing system is, but that's generally where um, we would have some notes about the equipment required for this approach. Um, but the briefing strip also includes important things like my final approach course, the minimum altitudes, and etc., and a little overview of the missed approach. So I like to look at that part of the chart. The next section down we get to is the notes section. And so the notes section is right below that Jefferson trademark briefing strip. So we do want to review the notes and verify that we can actually fly this approach. Uh, this one has a couple cautions that are, uh, we got to watch out for a blinding red nose. We got to check out for the supersonic heavy departures. Okay. Um, the reindeer practice, sometimes the postal flights with Santa letters and whatever. But we have that note section to review. So we check that out and make sure it doesn't say procedure not authorized at night. That would be a bad one if we couldn't do it at night and we needed to fly at night. The next section off to the side is going to be our minimum safe altitude. And so the minimum safe altitude right here, Jeppesen doesn't tell you the radius of this. I often tell my students, just think of it like the size of a quarter, 25 cents, because that's a 25 mile radius. And it is based here on the WSP and DB. So 25 mile radius of that NDB, if I'm at 1000 feet, I will clear my required obstacle clearance. So that's just good for awareness of altitude, of where I should be at in the general area as I approach the airport. Okay, so the next part that I'm going to be looking at for sure is, is this a good approach? You know, even before I, I should think about this, before I grab the approach chart, but, or before I pull it up on my device, but thinking about the wind, okay, so, what does the wind do for my approach? Is it gonna give me a headwind on the approach itself? Is that gonna slow my ground speed down? I'm thinking about those things. And I'm also thinking not just about the speed, but I'm also thinking about how much correction I might need uh, to the left or right of course for any kind of wind correction that I might need. Uh, this one's a little funky. Jefferson is having fun with it. They're saying it's the North Pole. So they're giving you like headings in direction true instead of magnetic because the North Pole would mess with that. Um, but yeah, so I'm thinking about what heading I might want to fly on final approach. The next area that I'm going to be looking at is my plan view, which is this nice overhead view of the approach. And that tells me, you know, I'm going to think about my headings that I'm going to fly again, like mentioning the wind correction. If timing is required, I'm going to think about that if I need timing for the approach. 
But I'm also going to kind of do a little mini brief of the headings that I expect to fly. So for example, let's say I were approaching from this direction, from kind of the southwest, then we have a holding pattern that is depicted. So we have to fly it as depicted because this is the procedure turn. Apparently it's not optional here. But then I'm going to think about what kind of holding pattern entry would I do? Well, just from looking at this, and I have some other videos you can check out with holding pattern entry, I can tell that I would probably want to do, just do a direct hold. So once I hit Santa fix, I am going to make a turn and go outbound. Um, and then it would be one minute. It isn't labeled anything else. And then I would turn back inbound on that course that I've selected thinking about that. So when I say brief the headings, I'm talking about like everything, approach, heading, but also any kind of holding pattern, procedure turn that I'm going to need to do. Or if I'm getting radar vectors, I can brief what I might expect to get for radar vectors. And then last, after that area, I'm also going to be looking at the profile view, which is this section down here. That's the side view of the approach. And then I get to the portion of my briefing where I'm talking about altitudes. So while I'm in this holding pattern right there, I want to maintain 3,000 feet during the holding pattern. And then I can brief all my other altitude step downs. This appears to have a couple decision altitudes given at the bottom of the chart. So there's a DA for the RLS. This is kind of like a weird... Thing about the ILS maybe but also we have a DA here um, it looks like I don't understand quite how it's an RNAV but we have a localizer minimum so I don't know Jefferson and Santa what you guys have going on but um, I'm gonna brief all my altitude so 3,000 in the hold then as I cross Santa I can go down to 2,500 as I cross Kloss then it appears that I can go down to my decision altitude of either 250 or 400 feet, depending on what kind of equipment outages is going on during this approach. And also I wanted to brief my minimum um, visibilities. Okay, so in this one, um, we wanna talk about the minimum visibilities. Let's actually just look in a little bit more detail with that. Uh, this is an interesting approach. They've said that we do not need any visibility if everything's working, RVR of zero. So that's that's pretty good. I guess Santa is all weather operation here. Um, but then if, uh, for example, the tinsel were out, then my minimum would be an RVR of 4,000 or three quarter of statute mile. If tinsel and twinkle were out, my RVR would be required 5,000 or one mile visibility. Cool. And um, so you can see there, we want to brief those step downs. So 3,000, 2,500. I also want to think about what would be a good descent angle to get me down to that decision altitude. Um, Jefferson hasn't published one for this one, but since it has a DA next to it, that means it's a decision altitude. That means I should have vertical guidance. So it should take me down right to that um, 250 foot decision altitude. So let's go back now to the overhead view of everything. So that's my, um, that's my descent briefing. I'm basically gonna brief all my minimums. And then lastly, I'm gonna brief the missed approach. Always be ready to fly the missed approach. And so the missed approach is in a few places on this chart. Number one, I really like um, the little three icon that Jefferson always puts right up above the uh, kind of kitty corner to the approach minimums, but they can give you a really quick overview. Straight climb to 2,500 feet and then the direct two symbol, mistletoe. And that is typically going to lead me eventually to a holding pattern. But there's a little bit more to it than just this part of the missed approach. We also want to review, remember I said it was in the briefing strip, we have this part of the briefing strip. The missed approach says, climb to 2,500, direct mistletoe, then right turn, direct kissing, and hold. So that actually directs me back up to my plan view where we have this holding pattern that is depicted at kissing intersection. And when I'm briefing my missed approach, I find it also very helpful to think about that missed approach hold. Like, what am I actually gonna do? So I'm ready to 
think about that. So in this example, if I were approaching from mistletoe intersection and I'm coming up on kissing, it looks to me like it would be either a teardrop, we could do like that type of holding pattern, or we could do a parallel entry and just fly opposite and then turn through the middle of the hold. And again, I have some other videos if you want to look at holding pattern stuff. It's not nearly as fun as the Christmas approach briefing, but then we could do the hold there. And once again, this hold, um, just basically, apparently it's at 2,500 feet. They haven't put anything different on there. So that's what I would do and then figure out, you know, what we're going to do next. So um, that is my approach briefing overall. We're gonna start there at the top, work our way down through the chart. Again, I'm not giving you all the detail on this because some of this stuff is just totally silly and completely made up anyway, but that's super fun. So hopefully you guys have a Merry Christmas and thank you for watching Aviation 101 with Laura. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Have a great day.